Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Now, let's take a look at the headlines. Sri Lanka's cabinet resigns amid unrest. UN brokered ceasefire takes effect in Yemen. Rodrigo Chavez wins Costa Rica's election. Haitian health workers month-long strike. Protest against the severe economic crisis in Sri Lanka continued on April 4th. Demonstrations were reported in towns including Tangela, with protesters breaking through police barricades. Sri Lanka has witnessed days of unrest against shortages of fuel and food. As public anger grew, the Gotabaya Rajapaksa government declared a state emergency on April 1st. Protests continued over the weekend despite a 36-hour country-wide curfew. Police fired tear gas and water cannons as hundreds of university students gathered in the central province. Over 600 people were also arrested in the western province on April 3rd. Amid calls for Rajapaksa to step down, all members of cabinet resigned later on Sunday. The President's office announced on Monday that four new ministers had been appointed. Rajapaksa also dismissed his brother, Basil Rajapaksa, as finance minister. He was set to travel to the US this month to meet with the International Monetary Fund. The President has also invited opposition parties to form a unity government to address the situation. Now, Sri Lanka is undergoing its worst economic crisis, triggered by a scarcity of foreign reserves. However, its roots have also been traced to issues including budget shortfalls and sweeping tax cuts introduced by Rajapaksa. After COVID-19 hit, Sri Lanka's economy suffered due to a fall in tourism and remittances. The government is struggling to pay for crucial imports and widespread power cuts have been imposed. The national currency also underwent a sharp devaluation last month and the inflation rate has crossed 17%. Moving on to our next story. An oil tanker arrived at Yemen's Hodeida port on April 3rd after a two-month ceasefire took effect. A UN broker truce was announced on April 1st by Special Envoy Hans Grunberg. All parties had agreed to halt all offensive military, air, ground and maritime operations inside Yemen and across its borders. However, shortly after the ceasefire took effect, local media reported Saudi artillery and rocket fire. The attack was reportedly aimed at the city of Sada. According to the Iranian press TV, at least three people were killed. Yemeni news agency Sabah also reported or other violations by the Saudi-led coalition in Hodeida and other areas. Now, this has raised concerns about the durability of the country-wide ceasefire, which is the first of its kind. As per the agreement, the Saudi coalition will lift its blockade to allow 18 vessels carrying fuel to Hodeida. The Houthi-controlled port serves as an entry point for around 80% of critical humanitarian aid and commercial imports. Two commercial flights will also be permitted to travel to and from the airport in Sana'a each week. The agreement includes talks to open roads in Tez and other provinces for civilians. The UN has said that the ceasefire can also be extended with the consent of both parties. Now, the Houthis have maintained that a permanent ceasefire is conditional on both an end to the military offensive and the lifting of siege of Yemen. Center-right candidate Rodrigo Chavez has won Costa Rica's presidential runoff election. With 98.1% votes counted, the former finance minister has secured 52.8%. Now, meanwhile, former President Jose Maria Figueres from the center-left National Liberation Party secured 47.1% of the votes. According to the Supreme Electoral Court, over 43% of eligible voters did not take part in Sunday's election. Now, 60-year-old Chavez belongs to the Social Democratic Progressive Party. He worked for the World Bank for nearly two decades and was part of the outgoing Alvarado administration. He has vowed to reorganize the public services budget and introduce a universal minimum pension. He also pledged to create jobs and increase investments in green energy. 
Chavez has indicated the plans to turn Costa Rica into a tourist destination to fund his programs. He has even stated that he will use referendums to bypass Congress to introduce changes. The new government will come to power on May 1st for a fourth term until 2026. It faces the challenge of addressing a dire economic situation. 23% of the population is living in poverty and the unemployment rate has soared to 17%. Costa Rica also owns a debt of $1.78 billion to the IMF. Chavez will have to govern with the backing of just 10 lawmakers in the unicarmal parliament. He will have to negotiate with the five other parties represented in the chamber. This includes the National Liberation Party, which is the largest faction with 19 seats. And finally, health workers in Haiti have ended their strike after one month. The action had shut down operations across major public facilities, including one of the State University and Justinian Hospital. The strike began at the end of February to raise issues including salary adjustments and working conditions. They were also demanding the payment of areas through a monthly charge on a debit card. An agreement was finally reached between the union at the State University Hospital and the Ministry of Public Health and Population. Workers will receive three months of payment on debit cards. They have also been promised supplies of fuel and other inputs required for the hospital. However, other unions have warned that full resumption of work will depend on whether the government's promise are fulfilled. Haiti's health system has been struggling under chronic lack of resources amid a broader social economic political crisis. Imperialist and neoliberal interventions and natural disasters have weakened the public infrastructure. The earthquake in August 2021 alone left 59th health facilities damaged. As of March 2022, only 1% 1 of Haiti's population had been fully vaccinated. Access to critical care has also been disrupted by growing insecurity and violence by armed gangs. The Center for Analysis and Research in Human Rights documented 949 reported kidnappings last year. Gangs have also targeted health workers with two physicians abducted in March. Now, this had prompted a three-day strike between March 14th and 16th. Workers are demanding security and the allocation of more resources for the health system. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you.